I'm going to do something that I've never done in my 25-year-old music career. I'm going to listen to hundreds, actually thousands of older songs, then I'm going to flip some samples from those songs, then I'm going to make a beat, then I'm going to clear those samples or license them, and then I'm going to rap. Just kidding, I will not be rapping in this video at all, I promise, but I will be giving this beat to one of my favorite rappers, and I might be completely out of my element here. What is the difference between a composer, a producer, and a beat maker? This isn't a joke, it's an actual question. No, guys, according to the AI Copilot that I never asked for that exists on my Windows desktop, a composer creates original music compositions. A producer guides the entire music production process, working closely with artists. And a beat maker specializes in creating instrumental beats, which serve as the backbone of songs. I've never traditionally produced a beat for a rapper. I've made music in the tempo of hip hop, which is like the whitest thing in the world to say. I have composed music in the tempo of hip hop. I have fooled around and made beat tapes, but I never released them. I have composed original music for a rapper as a ghostwriter, but I have never taken the art of sample flipping seriously until now. Now, don't get me wrong. I highly respect the art of making beats. I take them very seriously when listening to them. I burn incense at my altar praising Jay Dilla every morning, just like everybody else. In fact, I think that the most innovative music in the world right now is hip hop. And I'm jealous. I want to be a beat producer. I even wanted to make this video for a while, but there are two things that got in my way. Number one, I have worked with sync licensing long enough to know how problematic and potentially catastrophic it can be to flip a sample without clearance. And number two, beat making seems really laid back and chill, and um, I'm just way too neurotic. Fortunately, there are some more modern solutions to the sync licensing and clearing nightmare, and a lot of beat makers and producers like to use loop libraries like Splice, I personally wanted to go through the process of digging through old songs and repurposing the tracks, and there also seems to be a solution for my neurosis as well. So there's a company called Tracklib that maybe it's pronounced Tracklib. I'm not really sure because I haven't had a conversation in real life in like 10 years, but Tracklib has been around for a few years and they have an interesting solution to this problem. They've been acquiring rights to redistribute hundreds of thousands of older, mostly obscure songs. Some of them are vinyl rips and others actually have stems from the masters. By the way, discretion alert, I've spoken to Tracklib directly over email and have a relationship with them, primarily to make sure that I understand what I'm talking about in this video when talking about how the licensing works. In that exchange, they generously offered to sponsor the video and gave me a free membership with more credits than I could ever hope to use. And there's also a link in the description where my viewers can get 30 free credits. So if you want to check this out, not bad. So traditionally, the way Tracklib worked was you paid a small subscription fee, and then if you chose to use a song, you could then license it for a variable fee, and then you would have to pay a small percentage of royalties to the license owner, usually around 2 to 10%, which you could set up with like DistroKid or TuneCore. Now, more recently, for their premium and max members, they launched Unlimited limited sample clearances. So without further ado, let's dig through some virtual record crates on the internet. So I've just selected jazz in the BPM between 90 and 100, release year between 1928 and 1997, and uh, there's a lot here. Like a lot, lot. Like a lot, 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 lot. Set a loop here. We can just use our arrow keys. And then we could put a beat behind it. Simple rock beat. Friday night. Baby, I'm gonna sample you. That 
That is a dirty record. Sexy lady. Sexy lady. It's all right. Ooh. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I really like that loop. I keep falling down these rabbit holes of artists. This is Tony Iglio's Drugstore. Oh, yeah. Tony, thank you. I love this. As I'm digging deeper into what seems to definitely be over 100,000 tracks, I'm running into a lot of musicians that I know. For example, Raskovich is a pretty legendary library composer from the 70s. His stuff is super experimental and avant-garde, and I feel like there's like... There has to be some sort of catch to it. Like, now I can just sample and release it. Just to prove to you that I'm not pulling your chain here, here's my massive MP3 collection, and one of the biggest folders in it is my library music collection. And that has everything sort of organized with the companies or the libraries that release them. So there's KPM, that's an absolutely massive one. Bruton's a big one. Then there's some smaller ones like Barry. Uh, Color Sound is amazing. And so most of these were vinyl records and they would ship these vinyl records to, I don't know, NBC or CBS or something. And then if NBC or CBS wanted to use one of the songs in one of the shows, then they would have to pay a license fee. So the Renaissance period of library music would be like the late 60s, 70s, and early 80s. And then after that, it started dying out a little bit. And then eventually with the advent of the internet, it kind of fizzled out entirely. And so to see some of these names here in a place where they can be licensed in 2024 is actually really exciting. Oh my God, where have you been all my life? Reverend Harvey Gates has some fantastic tracks, and I believe he was part of the Floyd Family Singers, which was a 70s gospel touring group. I love this loop deep in this track. This cut is so good that it's almost like trite. A lot of these are just too good to be true, and as you could probably tell, some of them were released recently, 2022, but it sounds like it was released a long time ago, which tells me this was made to sound vintage as the perfect thing to be sampled in another genre, which is interesting and probably going to be the subject of a future video of mine because I would love to see how all of this stuff is produced. So I basically went overboard and picked out and downloaded close to a hundred songs. And despite being able to mark and download loops automatically from Tracklib, I wanted to do things my way and surgically pull them out of tracks in a way that would be perfect or imperfect in time and avoid any pops. If you're as anal retentive or insufferable as I am and you're curious about how to do this, it's actually not that difficult. You can use Audacity. I use Adobe Audition. <laughs> You zoom in all the way to the microsecond scale and you find a zero crossing, or where the waveform is in the center of the display. These are your loop points. No more clicks or pops, it's smooth. Anyway, unsurprisingly, I went overboard here too, and I made over 50 different loops, and that was the moment when I realized that I'm doing precisely what I said I wouldn't do with this project, being my neurotic self. So I hit the decks. Is that a phrase that anybody uses to describe going to work on turntables? I mean, it sounds like it is, it should be if not. Believe it or not, I am incredibly comfortable using a DJ kit. Once upon a time back in the day, for years, I had a weekly DJ residency in Chicago, which was both a lot of fun, but also helped me make ends meet in my early days as a musician.
Now more recently, I previously used this standalone Denon Prime system as my stem player for performing as the flashbulb. And despite it being frustrating with forcing its terrible BPM detection on you, it is an incredibly fun way to flip samples. Okay, I think this is gonna be the one. So Superlative, the rapper I'm producing for here, sent me his vocals and yeah, they're pretty much top notch and I have very little room for error here as I have very little experience in this genre and somebody else's valuable time and energy is relying on me to not completely shit myself like a jazz IDM dork overreaching into hip hop, which I'm probably... So I dragged the vocals into FL Studio and I tried out a lot of different ideas. I said, time spent, lots of inquisitive days I've spent, widespread, taking it gold from the page I've been writing. Get your marks and the scars limitless, but each day looking like I could be safe living it. Boom bap, it's not M bap, the toast time. I ultimately landed on a similar combo I cut at the turntables and I finally started feeling a bit of confidence once I added enough layers to make it sound huge. Then there's this piano sample in the beginning that I was just kind of using as a placeholder and was mostly on the fence about until, and this is why I love FL Studio so much, I put in a lot of pitch markers in the piano roll to make the different chords sort of bend and fall into one another. And that little difference made this hyper-emotional piano go from sounding kind of depressing to sounding smooth and wavy and funky. So after a bit of experimenting and trial and error with mixing and mastering, I think I'm ready to send this off. Yes, yes, people. My name is Superlative. The time is 9 a.m. and I've just been sent through the new song by Ben. And uh, I'm going to check this out now live for you guys. So let's get into it. Master of procrastination is so black. Now more than ever, my niggas can take the throne. Jazzy. Back. Still ligature marks and the scars limitless, but each day's looking like I could be safe living. Woo. It. Boom bap is not M bappy the toes tap. Still straight passing up bad vibes. Smooth, cause bad man. vibes will stay damaging. The soul gains till they see these no longer read. Please they panic. Stay quiet. Jeez. If you ain't here for the struggle, I make a wage right. They're from the years that my neighbors been hearing two track. Upgrade the speakers and mum is telling me move that. That's 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 all kinds of peekery sneaks, decent but the P low. Loads of them pre in the EP. Boy. No BC pay what they please, these were stacking. Yeah. It. Real G's get out the streets, see what's happening. Ah, make your minds out, more hills. I click my fingers, deliver lyrics and soul. Boy. Too grown, know what I already know is dope. Dome holds infinite possibility mindset. Time Inquisitive days I've spent widespread Taking the gold yeah, from the man. page I've been writing Feeling like days become years fast Now they stay gas Gather the masses Your, your boys, boys rap it Oh, right, that is fire I'm gonna play that one more time I love that When the synth opens up and becomes like It's almost It's like super reverberated But all of a sudden it's like Your mind feels clarity I love that man I love that Ben, you killed this one I am elated Thank you I obviously don't think that I'm going to become the next Dre here, but once I stopped doubting myself, I kind of just went with the flow and I got the dopamine rush I was looking for. When listening to Jay Dilla, part of me always imagined him just powering on his MPC 3000 and tapping out like 15 legendary beats a day while barely even paying attention. But 
that would be totally wrong. He not only learned and played the drums and other various instruments on his tracks himself, but if you dissect his recordings, the amount of deep digging and raw creativity to find his samples and sound sources is nothing short of phenomenal. In fact, there's a strong argument that Jay Dilla was a jazz innovator, and Kareem Riggins, one of the best jazz drummers alive, and sax player Greg Osby attribute Dilla's style to changing the landscape of jazz and freeing it from this. My takeaway from this, I think that I was initially incredibly wrong. I can't be sure, but maybe beat making is not chill after all. Maybe those who are great at it are probably perfectionists and incredibly neurotic, but they possess the ability of making it look easy. What do you think? How did I do? There's a comment box below, let me know. <laughs> I want to thank Tracklib for the absolute torrent of music and licenses they gave me. If you want to dig through their crates, I encourage it, and there will be a link in the description for a free trial and 30 free downloads for anybody watching this. And as always, of course, thank you to my Patreon members for helping me keep this channel chugging along. If you want to have access to a super healthy community of fellow creative folks and even participate in monthly songwriting challenges and get your greasy hands on some unreleased music and released music and field recordings and music making assets, my Patreon is as little as $1. Thanks for watching. Keep creating. Bye.